Hi, my name is Dr. Patricia Kalanicki, and this is a quick overview of EdCPA for secondary mathematics majors. I've been working in a few different universities, and I figured this would be a great way not only to introduce EdCPA to my students, but also to help uh, other students uh, do a quick overview of what to expect for EdCPA. So here we go. The purpose of EdCPA really is to assess, uh, assess your readiness to teach secondary math. Um, they're going to evaluate your ability to do three things. One, plan instruction. Two, actually do the instruction. And three, be able to assess your students. Um, you will be submitting as part of EdTPA artifacts as well as written commentaries to highlight your abilities in these three areas. So planning, instruction, and assessment. And those are organized by the three tasks. So task one is planning. In order to successfully do uh, your planning commentary, which you will do at the end, you need to select a class, provide information about that class, which is called your context for learning, it includes information, generic information about your school, the particular class you're in, um, how math is learned, how students are assessed and put into that class, and also specific information about students with special learning needs in your particular class. Um, there is a video that I made on modifications and accommodations that you may want to check out for that purpose. Um, you also have to identify a learning segment. That's three to five connected lessons. Think of this as like a unit. Um, you're going to teach that. You need to be sure that you dive into your central focus of that learning seg segment because your lessons need to include conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, and math reasoning or problem solving skills. I will refer to these as CPP because they're very important. I say it a lot, and it's a lot easier to say CPP than it is to say conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, and problem solving skills. So that's what I'm going to be calling it from now on. Um, you also have to identify and support language demands. So there, that is a very specific uh, criteria that EdTPA is looking for. Obviously, math is not isolated from the expectations that we are all educators of English and of reading. So that's a very important part um, that needs to be included in your lessons and will be added to your planning commentary. Part of the submission, the artifacts I was speaking about, is you're going to submit your lesson plans, instructional materials, as well as blank assessments. So now your planning commentary. This is a multi-page document that you're going to be writing and answering prompts. Your prompts will specifically focus on CPP, your understanding of students' prior learning and what they know, uh, the contextual background of your class, so based on the students that you have, how can you best support them? What's the best way to uh, teach them and plan for their instruction? And then how to support math students, obviously learning math. And then the language demands and supports as well. And then finally, how are you going to use assessments to monitor student learning? So that's all the different prompts that will be in your planning commentary. Again, a multi-page document where you specifically have to answer questions based on your planning. OK, part two. Seems easy, right? Instruction. You have to select a class. You have to get permission to record video. Again, it's based on your state, based on your CT, based on your school. So please be sure to check the requirements for your specific program. I'm just giving general advice in this video. Um, you're going to provide a total of no more than 15 minutes of video between at most two video clips. Sounds like a lesson on inequality words and how uh, <laughs> they work in real life. Um, but seriously, it's no more than 15 minutes. You can have two video clips, but each video clip can't be shorter than, I believe, it's three minutes. So again, check the EdTPA handbook for those specific requirements. Your video has to highlight a few different things, because this is going to be in your instruction commentary. A positive classroom environment, and specifically how students, how you are helping students develop those different components of CPP. Um, I do have some videos um, additionally that may help. I have one on engaging lessons and I have one on questioning. Um, these are some areas that I feel like are very important um, in terms of planning your lessons, in terms of making sure that the instruction that you catch on video is going to be helpful for you and successful for you through EdTPA. So I would check those out. Um, and then write your instruction commentary. Your commentary will have prompts specifically focused on citing evidence from your videos on how you promoted a positive learning environment, 
How did you engage students in learning? Again, engaging, engaging lessons, it's important. And then how you deepen students' learning through your instruction. Again, I'd recommend watching that questioning video because I think that's one way that we can help deepen students' learning. Um, there's also a prompt that asks you to analyze your own teaching and consider, well, what changes would you make now that you've done the lesson? And hopefully you can be a reflective educator and think about what you would change for the future. Okay, moving on to task three. This is your assessment task. You're going to choose one assessment from your learning segment. Obviously, and it's recommended that your lessons should have multiple opportunities for you to assess student learning. It should not be a quiz and a test and that's all you're giving. You should be doing formative assessments, entrance and exit tickets, um, stuff like that. Again, I have some videos on that sort of stuff as well. So check those out. You have to ensure that the assessment that you're picking evaluates students' ability to show CPP. So per, for this particular assessment, I would use a quiz or a test, something longer so that you have enough evidence and enough ver variety of questions to show all three aspects of CPP. Um, if you check out my assessments video, I give a lot of examples of each type of question. Um, for conceptual understanding, for procedural fluency, for problem solving, to maybe give you a, um, some insight into what they're looking for for EdTPA. Um, you have to submit a document that shows your evaluation criteria. Typically this is kind of like a chart that shows you know what a student would have to do to get full credit, partial credit, or no credit. That's one type of evaluation criteria you could use. Um, you're gonna have to analyze all of your students work. Again, I would take multiple copies of this. I think it's important. Um, you're gonna organize the results of that data and then in your commentary you're going to comment on it. You're going to select specifically three work samples. Those are going to be your focus students uh, based on the New York EdTPA handbook, most recent. Um, one of those students needs to be someone classified with an IEP. You need to give feedback to those students. Again, checking out the handbook for more specific guidelines. And then you're going to write your assessment commentary. Your commentary will have prompts specifically focused on citing evidence from your assessment as well as the results of your assessment. So where did students shine and where did they struggle with regards to the different components of CPP? The prompts also ask about the feedback you provided the language usage, and how you will now proceed since you have these results from your assessment. How will your instruction move forward? Again, it's a very brief overview of EdTPA for secondary math, but again, giving you a holistic picture of what it's going to look like and what you're going to have to do in your student teaching placement.